Death or Prison podcast brought to you by Lean On Me USA. Today, our discussion centers with Florida Department of Corrections Secretary Mark Inch and his plan, Roadmap to Restoration. Hello and welcome to the Death or Prison podcast brought to you by LeanOnMeUSA.org. I am Johnny Branham. To my right, Mr. Laz Lopez, and to my left, the Florida Secretary of the Department of Corrections, Mr. Mark Inch. And we are continuing a conversation that we started uh, last segment on a roadmap to restoration. And a part of that roadmap to restoration involves mentoring. You were mentioning in the last segment about inmate mentoring. How is that working, and, and what is that to our listeners? Uh, thank you, Johnny, for that for that question. The um, as we have looked at the best way to focus programming on the different needs of the of, of the incarcerated population. You know, we recognized first that you know the needs of someone who comes to us with less than a year remaining on their sentence and the needs of somebody who's with us for 20, 30, for life, you know, or long sentence. I mean, that's a a different set of needs. In a broader way that we're doing some of our population management, which I'm happy to share, we frankly came up with the idea of of pairing those two populations. So first take the the, the short-sentenced inmate. In a non-COVID year, we get over 7,000 men and women with less than a year remaining on their sentence. I mean, to, to come to us, you have to have a, you know, the year and a day, but they've already got time served in jail. So, so they come to us. And, and, and so for our population, I mean, you all know who I'm talking about. They came into the dorm. They were in that bunk for five months, never fit in, um, vulnerable. And they didn't do any programs because you have a warden here with people from life sentence all the way down to this person that's coming through. And there was no way for a regular institution to really marshal its resources to address that group and their needs. So what we're doing is uh, as we're creating at our reception centers dedicated areas away from general population for this group of Primarily novice offenders, though there are some that have come back for a second time, but we're really focusing on those who who obviously had a short sentence, are at a point in their life where it's either their first or second experience with us, and we're trying to focus our programs for that group. Well, here's the partnering. Um, we have men and women that have spent 20, 30 years with us that have learned exceptional life lessons you know whatever that trauma was and that experience was that resulted in the long sentence you know for many men and women that is a long time ago and we've had a relationship with these men and women as an agency for a long time we have been able to watch the programs they've been in we've been able to see them involved in positive choice activities that they've pushed violence aside you know, these are men and women of character. Now, yes, there was there was something in their past that was absolutely significant, and 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 there was victims, involved, you know, that impacted by that. But that does not mean that that one day really defines who they are now. You know, the potential of this group, uh, I think, is significant. And so, trying to find an opportunity to tap into to this population is is we came up with the idea of, of an inmate mentoring program for these short sentence inmates, someone who, by obvious experience in our system in their life experience, can come back and say, "Yeah, my first time was for one year too, and then I came back." You know, that one year didn't do for me what it needed to do to to um, to turn my life around let me tell you my life experience let me mentor you uh and so the way we started it and it, and it was one of the letters that you you mentioned in the last session of, of find a solution was i looked for volunteers who would participate in a curriculum development you know have that had experienced different programs over the years some that we used to have that we, that we don't have anymore uh, or other experiences has come together and help us design so uh eight men two women 
uh, met and and for for several weeks to do the design program, and then they became the the core of the mentor academy. Then then we gender split, and the the, the men went to Hamilton for their academy. Uh, the women were at uh, FWRC. I met with both groups, uh, uh, and they did their mentorship academy. So there's obviously staff involved in program oversight, and then in each region, the idea is is that we want to keep the short sentenced inmates you know, within the region where their family is because visitation is important, that connection is important. And though our system has 65% of our capacity in North Florida, but our intakes, frankly, are 65, oh, nearly 65% from Central and South Florida, at least for this group, by using the reception center, South Florida Reception Center, Central Florida Reception Center, carving out the portions necessary to address this population. Um, we can keep that group there now paired with, uh, with inmate mentors that can help run the programmatics. Their day is very full, very focused, but it's designed for a constant rotation of people, which was the challenge of the wardens dealing with this population out across our system is is how do you deal with the rotation when most of my programs uh, like a vocational training program is you know two years well, all, all of a sudden that person could not participate so we were focused in education substance use treatment um you know victim impact thinking uh the decision making think and, and, and focusing because that's what that group needs and and the idea is is you know this population does have a high recidivism rate is to bring that recidivism rate. And I think more than what is said, I think who is saying it is probably going to have the bigger impact. Actually, I'd kind of like the, what's your thoughts? You know, you know, you know, both of you having had uh, the experiences you had, do, do you think our life sentence and long sentenced inmates that have shown a life in incarceration of a positive role modeling, do you think they, they could have an impact on these novice offenders. Most definitely. Um, in my experience, uh, in fact, we had a guest here um, that was part of this podcast. His name was Freddie Morales. He was one of my mentors, even though he's younger than Iowa. But being at that moment, probably he had about 10 or 15 years on me already when I got to that institution. And that was just you know, God led. I mean, if we're being intentional like you are and your and your programs that you're setting up, especially at the reception center. Um, so you're saying that these guys or young ladies, they're going to be permanent, permanent. They'll come to reception. Reception center only means that's the location. Right. The, the, the dorms that they'll be in will be completely separate from general population. They, they will be their own general population. In essence, they're out of the system. There is no interaction between the novice offender and the uh, and the the breadth of general population. I mean, we know this. There's a there's a population that, if given a positive choice, will choose a positive choice to better themselves, or for no other reason. You know, I'm just bored and idle. I'll, whatever you want me to do, as long as I'm doing something. So there's, there, you know, you have that population. You do have that population of new inmates and um, and idle inmates, especially the idle side is just too big. That, you know, I'll make a good choice if you give me one, but otherwise, you know, what else is going on here? And then there is a population still committed to criminal activity that. That the statistics show that group is growing, uh, and, and and so we need to reverse it. But so at least for the short sentence inmates, we're we're separating them from that larger general population, and and a recognition that for their whole time with us, they're going to sit either in the middle population, the idle population, or they will be drawn to the to the criminal side. They're just not there long enough to get a hold of the the programs. To get on the waiting list and all that for the longer side, so so we're, we're creating kind of a system within a system, and then the programs and and then the impact. These mentors that have shown year over year over year over year confidence that they will be good mentors. That, that was going to be my question. Um, <clears throat> considering these long term or long sentence mentors that you're using, I'm sure they're disciplinary, report free, DR free. They've been you know reading model. 
um, um, uh, resonance. Some of them, not always. Not always. You know, we saw the point where they learned. Right. <laughs> and, and then, and then there's then yes that period. Do, are they <laughs> housed in the same dorm with these one year? So what, what's interesting about this is is I've actually given them a lot of freedom to develop. I think they're going to make the program so much more than we've even envisioned. So it is it is actually a living, breathing social environment where where it will develop. You know, the initial start of it, because bed space management is real in our system where we, we have to be as efficient as we can and all that. The ideal would have been... Um, you know, we started we started this one on the on uh, in January. So ideally, it would have been every new intake starting in January. Well, that's not the reality of bed space management. You know, if we've got beds and we have staff against beds, you know, we have to use those beds. Otherwise, you know, staff is working that many more hours of mandatory overtime. To start this program, we brought back from the system those who are short sentenced, and frankly, they're part of. The development of the program, and it will now, you know, month over month over month, as they're released and new ones come in, uh, and it's gonna, it it will develop, um, you know, where you know where the mentor sleeps in relation to where the those they're mentoring, how their groups meet, how volunteers are integrated, because we want to integrate, we really really want to integrate volunteers, you know, into this program because this is a very fluid. Actively returning um, novice inmate coming back to the community, and, and we just got to capture them so they don't do something else that puts them at the other end of the spectrum. I will say that I was fortunate to have an experience in the Horizon program. I don't know if it's still in existence in the Florida Department of Corrections, but similar to what you all are doing. Uh, now, I think is a wonderful program because they did have guys who had been in the system for a very long time and then a portion of the dorm of guys who were only in for three years and under. I had the opportunity, even though I didn't have a life sentence, but I was in for an extensive amount of time, had the opportunity to once I graduated the program to be a mentor. And I will say the blessing is twofold. Because it's not just the short sentence inmates that are getting the benefit. It's the guys who've been there who now have somebody looking up to them. So I think it works in both ways. And and that's by intent. We are really working hard to address those opportunities for our long-term sentenced uh, inmates, Um, you know, whether it be pride industries, you know, that so, so, you know, can work, um, whether it be, you know, the, the different type of programs in, in our, our population management strategies. Again, we've made a lot of adjustments, uh, even in this year of COVID, where we want the choices that the men and women make result in where they are and why they are, you know, of course, we've, we've always had the, for the period of time, you know, the good adjustment transfers and all that and choose where you want to go. And, and, and it's tough when you have way more demand to go somewhere than, than the available space. Um, we piloted a program, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Dixon, our deputy secretary, is a, you know, it was the, he and his team brainchild behind this of an incentivized prison where based on behavior, you would go to a location of like-minded people that have rejected violence, and you make that environment, um, you know, we as a system can take certain security risks because it's a population that has shown itself. I mean, it's still a secure facility, but they've shown themselves, uh, for example, going to the dining facilities, self-seating at dining facilities instead of what would be the normal pattern of, you know, first in, first out, and uh, how we do it. Uh, With... uh, Programs, you know, volunteers, what we learned at Evergrades, you know, liked that environment as well, and therefore increase in volunteerism. Um, and, and other, you know, obviously, we want to make it uh, a, a desirable location. Yeah, but, I mean, what, the, but what's, I, what's the true good thing about it? It's a group of like minded men there that have rejected violence, and, and the temperature. You know, I suppose my staff could walk around with their hands in their pocket and not worry about it there, 
No, that's not true. We always stay very vigilant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and if any of my staff are listening, get your hands out of your pocket. Um, but it, it, it's uh, um, so so we now have five of those. Uh, I mean, starting this the, year. It's the incentives you got also for mm-hmm. the resident to desire to go to a place like that. Exactly. You know, I, you have more time to, 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 to eat, I heard. Uh, you know, mattresses are better. Um, yes. Things like that. So, <laughs> yes, I mean, yes. if, if, if it's a, we like to call it, quote unquote, and you're the audience, you know, we call that a laid back camp. <laughs> Where it's like, no, you know. And, I, that, and that's okay because you remember the punishment, the retribution is your deprivation of liberty. It wasn't for you to be punished in prison. So, so you know, yes, I know there's criticisms of us doing this. It is still not, you know, going to, to you know, a, a resort. <laughs> I mean, it's still a prison. Yeah. You know, the deprivation of liberty is still there. You know, they, you know, the wire is still around, and, and 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 it's still a controlled environment, which is, which is required of us of the state and the statute to meet the the retribution, the justice portion, of of what we do. But yes, is, is the temperature low? Yes, that that would be the term I would use. And is that good? Absolutely, for the incarcerated and my staff. And that, that's abs- and we want that. So, so we now have five of these, and and here's something that that is. I know we'll do a, a segment that deals with resourcing and, and and all that. But I I have now, and, and I'll explain it in our next session. Greater freedoms for focusing programming, recreation as well, uh, in that location and other locations as well, uh, based on uh, support from the governor and the legislature. But the but the idea is is. Yes, we want it. We want to incentivize positive choices, to reject violence, to reject predatory activity. Now, you know, unfortunately, not everybody is is there with us right now. You yeah, know, you just had you a know. case in Santa Rosa where an officer got attacked. That is too. Yeah. I actually had an officer that uh, was was stabbed at, at another facility, and it's the second time in two years that he's been stabbed in the neck. You know it. Real, there are some that are still choosing violence, and so as part of our population management strategy, yes, we're going to re- we're going to reinforce. I'll tell you, we'll build as many incentivized prisons as we have people, inmates with behavior that justifies going. I I, I don't want any waiting list. So year by year by year, we will expand. And if our whole system turns into that, and there's only one place of those who choose not to do that. How great would that be? Then you know, forty-nine to the positive, one to the negative. But we do have we do have the side of of those who who choose to still facilitate violence. You know, you you had a shot caller on one of your podcasts, didn't you? Mm-hmm. And 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 it, that's real. And so we have established an administrative management unit. It is not a dark, dank place where you know where where we just you know. Send those that have chosen to continue along the, uh, that path, and you know the, the the classic, you know, lock them up, throw away the key. It's not that. It's actually a location that is as rich in programming as the incentivized side. But it, the program is geared towards. All right, you know, you're making life choices that affects our entire system. Um, let's work on that because I, I am convinced there's not a single person. That is not beyond reconciliation, beyond rehabilitation. You know, you know, for some, uh, I tell you, you know, for some, it requires true medical professionals dealing with mental health issues, dealing with such severe trauma that it impacts lives, and it takes a lot of effort, a lot of resourcing, a lot of effort to address them. But you know, in the years um, that I've done corrections and reinforced by the stories you have given on this podcast, you know. Lives turned around. I am, and and so even at our administrative management unit, I am hopeful, and I'm hoping they're hopeful um, that they can take a completely new direction, and then that new direction takes them, you know, back into to, to general population. I mean, it's it's not a. It's not a CM. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's not close management, restricted housing. It's still general population. It's just very well resourced security, but very well resourced programs um, to to address that. And and eventually, 
it meets in the middle. If we only have to have one of the these administrative management unit, you know, what a blessing that would be. You know, if we need two, then we'll have two. You know, it's it's all based on the choices that that men and women will be making to either go to that which is positive or to continue to want to live in a criminal lifestyle. Um, you know, I just want to make the line of the positive, the, the group of the positive, I just want it to grow and grow and grow. And then and there's that group in the middle that is idle or the new inmates, you know, I just want to shrink that up, but also protect that group from recruitment for, for what is now, frankly, too large of a group on the criminally minded and, and shrink that and give every one of them over there an opportunity to disconnect from that and move to the to the right. And yeah, that's that's, tough. that's well. That's what they need is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to take this opportunity, in fact, to congratulate you. You just celebrated. I believe this just this past month will be two years that you took on this yeah. position. I haven't been fired. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and when you took on this task, in fact, and back in two thousand, I was like eighteen at that time. There was reported that that was the most uh, inmate deaths in the Florida prison. I don't know if you knew that. But when you took on this task, I see the changes. It's a long road. I see a lot of things. For example, how you talk about volunteers. When you open, this is what I like. This is this is why I like uh, uh, Secretary Inch in this case, because I see the changes. I'm part of it. Um, you know that I'm, I'm, I'm field director for prison fellowship, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm working with you guys on this. <laughs> but when, I, when you open the website, the first thing that comes out is be a volunteer. So Absolutely. that's the kind of stuff that I see that when we find when we're looking for a solution and we're looking for mentorship, we see that, hey, you're taking that step in the right direction. And when we talk about mentorship, I, I, I wanted to ask you because um, I'm going on 13 years out mm -hmm. uh, and I still have a mentor. I still have an accountability. He's my mentor slash accountability partner. Absolutely. So this is something that we need in I believe in the system because we have to hold each other accountable even at the risk of a friendship. And, and so this is the type of stuff that helped me while I was incarcerated to not start when I got out, but start at the moment. Um, do you have any issues when you put a long sentence uh, mentor in a position where we try to avoid, because I know... We don't want to put them in a position of like authority, authority, correct? But of that of an example. I mean, how do you define that between one and the other? So, uh, so that's the risk of the program, and, and you hit it straight on. Is is we don't whether it's an in, inmate uh, teacher assistant, whether whether it's it's uh, a kind of an instructor in pride, or you know those, or, or frankly, or a law clerk. You know, anybody who's in a, a, a position. We always have to watch to ensure it is never done for personal gain. It's just like a public servant. If you looked at the code of conduct for a correctional officer, you know, there, there is this specific paragraph that says we don't do any of this for personal gain. Um, maybe that's why our pay is so low. No, just joking. Uh, I just got myself in trouble. But um, no, but it, 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 it is service. It is service, and 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 so the, the you know part, frankly, of the selection process of the men and women we chose. I mean, they had to have the recommendation of their classification officer. They had to have the recommendation of their warden. I mean, so many men and women shot letters to me directly, saying after I did the letter, you know, pick me. Um, you know, that wasn't the way they got on the list because the letter was very specific. Write it up for your classification officer and your warden, and that's when it would make it, you know, back up to central office to the regions in the central office for who was chosen initially and then who was the first group. Now, trust me, if this works, and I think it will, if if we have the systems in place to address the risk you just identified of of someone using it for authority and then personal gain, um, as as long as our systems work and we don't go that way. One should expect this to expand to other populations, to other focus areas. And I, I mean, I like the idea. It makes perfect sense to me to try to get as much like-minded, positive 
like-minded individuals together in communities. It works for substance use treatment, you know, having actually actual therapeutic community as part of the treatment for substance uh, use disorders, um, which is a very significant need within our system. Um, the uh, having veterans dorms. I, I've been a great fan of veteran dor- veterans dorms in, in corrections and have seen that used. And and you know, I'm very interested in this innovative approach to these short sentence inmates coupled with life sentence inmates. I mean, I don't. I'm not sure. I'm sure there's other systems that must have done something similar. Um, I just can't recall that, but at least how we're doing it and having used our, our uh, you know, very good, positive role model inmates to be part of the development of this and to continue, they, they will continue to be part of the development. And, and when I spoke to the, the group of the men and the group of the women at their, their training academies, I said, make this more than anything I've envisioned. You know, let me hear your ideas and, and you know, you know, I'm always trying to elicit the best ideas, whether it's the best ideas, uh, you know, from staff, best ideas from from our incarcerated population, best ideas from our advocacy. You know, I'm not on, actually on the opposite side of the ad- advocacy community. I, you know, I love anybody who's as passionate about corrections in the in the, in the men and women under our care uh, as I am. You know, show me you have the same amount of passion, and and and. There will be somebody on my staff that will talk with you. We will match passion, and then we'll talk the merits of the argument uh, you know, on, on any issue. Secretary, in reference to the letters, you get response from inmates. Um, they, uh, some are criticizing. Uh, any of those letters stand out, highlight? So many. Maybe if I start with the grouping of the letters— they fall, kind of fall into three categories of those I get. Those that have very large system-wide recommendations, recommendations for the reinstatement of parole, recommendations for um, you know changes in gain time, recommendations uh, that that would you know that that are basically very large legislative. You know, maybe better send it to your senator and representative because this is a. A change of law, but there's value in in seeing that and understanding it. Then there is uh, to the other side those that have individual requests. I want to be sent to Everglades. I want to go to Hardy. I want to, um, you know, I want to be in this program, that program. Um, personally, I have this group forward those emails, even though they go into my read file. It, it, you know, when I very quickly see this is a personal request. Uh, and our system has a way to address personal requests. You know, those letters are go to the appropriate, you know, it's a big system. You know, I have a staff of 24,000, and, and the population now is actually 14,000 less than it was at the start of COVID, but it's still a very large population, just under 80,000. Um, frankly, I don't do... I I don't do personal requests because there's not enough day hours in the day to address eighty thousand personal requests. But we have a system to do so. Now there's that sweet spot in the middle of recommendations for programs that have worked in the past, or maybe new ideas work forward. I'll, I'll tell you, there, there there's some folks there that could get could get hired as consultants right now, based on the thought. The thought placed into their proposal, the organization in which they write it for me, the great penmanship, which I absolutely appreciate, uh, to make it easier to read, um, and 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 you know I'll read these and I'll take them and go you know it's like wow, um, and then I'll forward it to Mr. Mahoney who who's our director of of of, uh, of programs and reentry, and say can. Can we do something like this? And and so we get it into that planning process. Um, this very large group of let's change Florida law, and and that's legitimate to 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 have those views. And there's very rich discussions going on. There are those that say this is my personal issue. We have processes for that, um, but but I I personally really focus in on. This program, I've, I've I've sat, I've thought it through. I think this is a solution to violence because I really asked, "Come on, team, help me understand violence." And, and I've gotten uh, a lot of responses for that. As I think of all these letters, and, and there's so many examples, 
got an, uh, a letter from one inmate, and and I did reference it in the one of my letters, where you know this guy shared his his life, his experiences, you know what he's trying to accomplish in life. Uh, and and it was just a very heartfelt, you know. Do you have any advice for me? And you know, I literally wanted to, because it was a facility close to Tallahassee. I literally wanted to get in my car and just drive down and say, you know, warden, bring this guy up. He's the Wakala. <laughs> yeah, Wakala. Did, <laughs> yeah. did I put the? Did I put that in the letter where it happened from? Okay, <laughs> I couldn't remember if I had said which facility. And and, and I mean, there was this dire. To, I want to be that guy's mentor. Well, I can't be the secretary of corrections and invest the time to be that guy's mentor. And, and then also be then that next person mentor and that next person as, as much as my heart's desire would be to do so. But as secretary of corrections, I can create the conditions that there is a mentor to work with that guy who's just, just reaching out. So if, if you're asking what was the most impactful letter? That guy wins. And that's what we've been talking about, mentoring and inmate mentoring programs that are working. All you have to do is do the right thing and get involved. And so you've been listening to Laz Lopez, myself, Johnny Branham, Secretary of Florida Department of Corrections, Mr. Mark Inch. We've been continuing conversation in regards to a roadmap of restoration that involves a, a litany of things and mentoring and volunteering. And we're going to be continuing a conversation along those lines coming up. This has been the Death or Prison podcast brought to you by LeanOnMeUSA.org. We say it's death or prison, but we want you to choose life. Lean on Me USA in partnership with Alpha USA Prison and Reentry wants to help you find a welcoming church. No matter where you live, please call 314-607-8850.